Hi everybody and welcome to Beetle Days Beetles channel. Today I will be showing the Plastic Ono Band LP Live Piece in Toronto 1969. So please come and join me. So hello everybody and a fantastically warm welcome to Beetle Days Beetles channel. I really hope I find all you brilliant Beetles people doing really well out there. And thank you so much for joining me again today on the channel. Well the subject for today's showing is the Plastic Ono Band album Live Piece in Toronto 1969, which for John Lennon at the time pretty much signified the end of the Beatles as a functioning group, something he actually discussed with Eric Clapton on that Toronto plane flight. But that, as they say, is another story. OK then, well that'll be coming up very, very shortly, but right now it's time for something completely different. It's... Ask Beetle Dave, yeah! Yes, welcome to Ask Beetle Dave, where I'll be answering your questions that you have about anything Beatles related, about any item maybe that I've shown, about any of the solo projects, or Apple records, or Dark Horse records, and so on and so on, and I'll endeavour to answer it here. So today's question is another actually from Gerard McMullen. Hi Gerard, hope you're well my friend. And Gerard's question is, Beetle Dave, do you collect vinyl from any other artists other than the Beatles? Well, yes I do. And many years ago I had collections of records by The Who, The Doors, The Stones and many other artists. However, because my Beatles collection just completely took over, which isn't such a bad thing, I've had to make a few sacrifices along the way and of course for space in subsequent years. However, I couldn't bear to get rid of my monkeys collection which are as nearly as dear to me as my Beatles collection. So Gerard, I really hope that answers that question for you. And of course, you guys, if you'd like to contribute to Ask Beatle Dave, why not just send me a question in the comments and I'll include it in a future episode. It's that simple. So come on guys, please please me by getting involved and ask me some fabulous questions. So moving on now, it's time for... I call your name. Yes, it's them old shout outs. And it's a big Beetle Dave hello to Jerome Comma, Jordan 390A, George Price, hiya George, Pharrell McNulty, RJ Aranata, Neil Searle, Alex Weaver, and Robert Ludwig. What a fabulous name. That's a great big Beetle Dave hi to you guys. So on to the main event then today and it's the Plastic Ono Band album Live Peace in Toronto 1969. So please come and join me. Live Peace in Toronto 1969 is a live album by the Plastic Ono Band released on Apple Records which was recorded at the Toronto Rock and Roll Revival Festival on the 13th of September 1969. John received a phone call from the festival's promoters, John Brower and Kenny Walker the day before the concert, after which he quickly assembled a band consisting of Eric Clapton, Klaus Vorman and drummer Alan White to play at the festival. The group flew from London and had brief rehearsals on the plane before appearing on the stage at the Varsity Stadium Canada. They performed several songs including some rock and roll standards and a newly written song played for the very first time which was Cold Turkey. Though preparations for the show were rushed and chaotic, Lennon later said that he'd gained the confidence to leave the Beatles during those few days and he'd also mentioned this to Eric Clapton. Upon returning to London, he privately told the Beatles manager Alan Klein he wanted to leave the Beatles. Being the first live album by any Beatle, John mixed the album after he had returned home from the concert with some additional mixing in October. In the US, Capitol were reluctant at first to issue the album after the commercial failures of Lennon and Ono's experimental albums. However, John managed to persuade them that it just might sell. 
The album was simultaneously released in the UK and the USA on the 12th of December 1969, but sadly it didn't chart in the UK, selling only around 5,000 copies, with some having a 13-month calendar as a bonus. In the USA, it reached number 10 on the Billboard chart, being certified gold after selling a million copies. So let's take a look. So here is then the Plastic Ono Band Live Piece in Toronto LP from 1969 and I would just like to mention about the sad loss of Alan White back in May and I actually spookily began photography for this video on that very day. And of course he was the original Plastic Ono Band drummer along with Mr Ringo Starr as well. So a very sad loss and condolences to his family as he was actually a really great drummer. So rest in peace Alan White. So yes, we're going to be looking at this first issue of Life, Peace in Toronto from 1969, released on the 12th of December 1969, catalogue number Core 2001, and we're just going to look at the sleeve first, which is a Garrett and Lofthouse made sleeve, fully laminated, so let's take a look at this sleeve first then. So as you can see, very stark sleeve, a nice colour blue actually, and of course we've got that cloud, and that cloud seems to seems to pop up on a few Lennon releases, obviously on Imagine you've got that cloud again so it obviously means something to him so yeah it's quite a nice quite a nice blue on this sleeve and let's turn that over and then at the top we've got the plastic I know band there, live piece in Toronto 1969 and then we've got all the track list in there, bottom left blue suede shoes, money Dizzy Miss Lizzie which is obviously spelt wrong there Spell IE instead of with just the Y at the end. Year Blues, Cold Turkey, and Give Peace a Chance. Obviously, Cold Turkey there being the first time it's ever been played. It's a new composition. And then we've got Don't Worry Kyoko, Mummy's Only Looking for a Hand in the Snow, and John John, Let's Hope for Peace. And we've got the players there John, guitar vocals, Yoko Ono vocals, Eric Clapton, guitar. Klaus Wallman on bass and of course Alan White on the drums. Produced by John and Yoko Bag Productions. And a little statement from Derek Taylor saying, Being born in Scotland carries with it certain responsibilities there, Derek Taylor. With the Garrett details there, bottom left. And on the bottom right we've got EMI Records and that Granny Smith. So let's take a look at that spine as well. It's a very thin spine this one but we've just got about got the details on there. So with the earliest copies of Live Peace in Toronto, you had this 13 month calendar which you would have got. Now obviously there isn't that many around these days and I don't think there was actually that many printed at the time. So as I said, the earliest copies seem to have these in. So we're gonna take a look at this then. And on the front there, we've got John and Yoko calendar as you can see, and a paste your own cover there as well, message. So we'll just go through each page, and on the first page there's some John Lennon poems there, some of which was actually in the Beatles 1969 Christmas Flexi as well, which would be quite familiar to some, and something about the awful there from John, a little bit from Yoko, and then we've got a blank page there. Let's flip that over and when we got the young photos of Yoko and John there in the beginning. And then we got the month, January 1970 calendar. And then we've got February, some more photos of John and Yoko. And February there. And then we've got March. An outtake photo of two virgins there. Let's flip that over to April. And that's John and Yoko planting acorns. In April 1970. It looks like John and Yoko arriving for a premiere or something there. Oh, in his own right, actually, it says at the top there. And then we've got the May calendar. So 
So flipping that over to June when they released their balloons. And there's the June calendar with some more text there from John and Yoko. And that's from the Two Virgins promotional film, that picture. And there's a July calendar. With the August photo. You really don't see this calendar about at all these days. It's the, the, the UK one is just incredibly rare to find. So many must have got used or ripped or destroyed. So it's nice to see these calendars. And it's a part of the package. Certainly the early, early copies. And there's John and Yoko getting arrested there. And that's October. And we're on to November. And that was when Yoko had a miscarriage there. And there's the November calendar. And then finally, for December, John and Yoko in a bag, it looks like. Wedding bag performance by John and Yoko. And there's the month of December, but then of course, being a 13 month calendar, we've got one more. A picture of John and Yoko there, walking down the street. And there's our 13 month there, completely blank. And then some credits there at the bottom. So with this copy then we've got the white patent numbered in a bag and then bottom right you've got the made in England and of course you've got the patent number bottom left. So onto the first pressing vinyl then and this one's in absolutely lovely shape, really lovely condition this one. Super label there, really super looking. You've got the plastic owner band there, live piece in Toronto, 1969 at the top. With on the left, the 33 and a third, manufactured in the UK, and side one. With on the right, we've got the stereo, core 2001. Bizarrely, we've got the P1970 and P1969. So I'm assuming this record initially was intended to actually be released in the early 70s but I'm guessing they rush released it in time for the Christmas market in December. Also there we've actually got a misspelling where it says Dizzy Miss Lizzie. You've got Lizzie spelled I-E at the end instead of just the Y. So on early copies you've got the misspelling. On later copies it's spelled correctly. So the matrix on side one is core 2001 A-1U. I'm going to flip that over for side two. And once again, you've got the plastic Ono band, live piece in Toronto 1969 there at the top, with the 33 and a third manufactured in the UK and side two on the left, with the stereo core 2001 the P1970 and the P1969 there on the right. And actually early copies also have Apple Publishing Limited or Apple Publishing NCB on the label as opposed to Ono Publishing on later copies. But the matrix on side two then is Core 2001 B-2U. Starting to get a lot harder to find this particular record but this one's in a lovely condition. So onto the second pressing I've got here of Live Piece in Toronto. This is the USA First Pressing, catalog number SW3362. And this one's completely sealed and this was released on the same day as the UK, 12th of December, 1969. So let's have a good look at this one. Once again, you've got the same type sleeve with the little cloud on the bottom left. Got some brief holes down there as well. 
You can actually see the calendar there within, all sealed within. Some of the calendars are actually like a plastic spiral and some of them are actually like a wire type ones. But this is obviously, I think, the plastic one from what I can tell. And let's just flip that over then and we'll have a look at the back. So we've got the plastic Anno band there, live piece in Toronto, 1969. With all the track listings, obviously Lizzie spelt incorrectly again, i.e. instead of just the Y at the end. And all the players with the John and Yoko Bag Productions, Derek Taylor's little statement. And I think you've got the Apple Records Broadway address there, at the right at the bottom, just about to see that. And you've got that Granny Smith. And take a look at that spine. So on to the third version I've got here of Live Peace in Toronto. Once again, this is a USA first issue one, but this one hasn't actually got the calendar. The catalogue number is once again SW3362, released on the 12th of December 1969. So let's have a little look at this one then. It's got some breathe holes there, as you can see, and there. You've got the same lovely looking blue, and then we'll flip that over. Got the same details as before, plastic owner band, live piece in Toronto, 1969. With all the track listing on the left there, Lizzie spell incorrectly again. With all the players and the production details with the Derek Taylor statement and of course the Broadway address of Apple. And you've got the Apple logo itself there. And we'll just take a look at that spine. So on to the original USA 8-track version of Live Peace in Toronto then. Catalogue number 8XT-3362, released on the 12th of December 1969, obviously same date as the LP. So we're going to have a good look at this cassette then. And it's completely sealed, as you can see there. Slightly different variation on the cover there, where you've actually got the title at the top and the little cloud with the Apple logo and the catalogue number. And you've got programs 1, 2, 3 and 4 with the Apple 8-track stereo. And then on the top, once again, you've got the Apple 8-track stereo with nothing on the sides. A little bit of Apple 8-track stereo information, the warranty there with the Apple logo there. And finally, on the spine of the tape. So moving on to a USA Capital reissue of Live Peace in Toronto. This one was released in 1982, catalogue number ST-12239 and the barcode is 7777-12239-1 and this I would assume have been on the Purple Capital label as she says it at the top there, a Capital reissue with the catalogue number and this, it does look like a slightly different blue, slightly darker this one. And you've got that cloud again. And let's flip that over. And once again, we've got the Plastic Ono Band, Live Piece in Toronto, 1969. With that barcode there, top right. And you've got all the tracks with the misspelling of Lizzie. And all the details, all the players. And at the bottom we've got the capital details along the bottom edge there with the EMI logo on the right. Let's take a look at that spine. Spine, the wording at the top this time. Plastic Ono Band, Life Peace in Toronto 1969 with the catalogue number on the bottom right. So on to the very first CD that was released in the UK then of Live Peace in Toronto. This was actually released on the 1st of May 1995, catalogue number CDP 7904282, and it's obviously the dual case type which you would have got from the time. So let's take a look at that then. I'm going to take a look at the outside. And there's obviously the front, perfect replica there. And on the back, we've got the barcode and the printed in UK. 
with the title and all the track listings and obviously Dizzy Miss Lizzie is spelled correctly this time with all the players and all the other details you would have got on the back of the album sleeve and the Granny Smith there and then we've got the spine we'll take a look at that booklet on the inside so the first page once again you've got all the track list in there and cleverly we've got the 13 month calendar within the actual booklet which is cleverly done and replicated exactly so obviously this time it's 1995 the calendar's for really really clever miniaturized everything's exactly as the original calendar there's August and September October November and finally December and then we've got the extra month which is obviously blank and then some more credits on the back so looking at the actual CD then as you can see the artwork is very very similar with the blue and the text type obviously you've got the correct spelling this time of Dizzy Miss Lizzie again and actually the mix is slightly different um, this was actually supervised by Yoko and on John's tracks some of her vocals have actually been put back in and actually some bits have actually been taken out again so it's actually a completely different mix than the actual UK LP original LP so yeah just compare the two and see what you think so on to the next vinyl variation then I've got of Live Peace in Toronto. This is the Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs version which was released on the 22nd of November 2006. Catalogue number MFSL1-283. So let's take a look at the cover then. This is a really great cover, it's really thick, it's a really nice card. You've got the original master recording there at the top with that lovely looking cloud on the lovely looking blue. I'm going to flip that over. Got that original master recording once again with the Plastic Uno Band Live Piece in Toronto 1969 with all the track details on the left with John, Yoko, Eric, Klaus, and Alan, all the details there with some production details there of the eight track tapes. No limited edition number on there, which is a bit weird. It might be a promo copy though, this one. Got the capital details there, and on the right, some more information. EMI Records, manufactured by in Hollywood, California, with that with mobile fidelity details there in Chicago, with the Apple logo and the barcode on the right hand side. And let's just take a look at that spine with the catalogue number there and the details. So inside we've got this wraparound advertising sheet. We've got some other LPs on there with the live piece in Toronto there. And on the back, some more albums advertised with three more John Lennon LPs there with Imagine, Plastic Uno Band and Mind Games. And this just opens out and there's nothing on the inside. Just plain white there. So next we've got the Mobile Fidelity in a bag and with this issue we've got the original calendar reproduced perfectly once again I won't go through every single page but it is exactly perfectly replicated just like the original so onto the vinyl then and this is a 180 gram, really incredibly thick vinyl. 
Really nice looking vinyl though. You got all the details at the top there. Plastic owner band, live piece in Toronto, 1969. With side one with the catalogue number MFSL 1-283. With the capital logo on the right and the mobile fidelity sound lab logo on the right as well. And you've got the Apple logo there as well at the bottom. And the matrix on side one is MFSL 1-283A-1. And this is an incredibly thick vinyl, really nice. And spin that round to Yoko's side. And once again, you've got the same details at the top there. Plastic under band, live piece in Toronto, 1969. And on the left we've got side 2 with the MFSL catalogue number 1-283. And on the right you've got the capital logo with the mobile Fidelity Sound Lab logo and the Apple logo at the bottom there. With the matrix on side 2 being MFSL 1-283B-1. And these are getting a lot rarer these days to find these MFSL ones. Worth seeking out though. So on to the fabulous Japanese mini CD then. Catalogue number TOCP70390 released in 2007. Let's take a look at that cover first then. And I can't get over how well made these really are. Right down to the sort of laminated sleeve. It's just absolutely incredible. You've got the OB strip there. As you can see, running through all across the back. And you've got the title of the album there running across the top with all the track listing and the musicians. Of course, you've got that misspelled Lizzie on there as well. And right on the right hand side there, you've got the little Granny Smith. And take a look at that spine as well. So then we've got the miniaturized John and Yoko calendar, absolutely perfectly replicated. We just flick a couple of pages so you get the idea. It's exactly the same as you would have got there. Really, really fantastic. So we've got the Japanese information sheet. And this opens out, it's a tri-folded one. Got all the track list in there. And then on the back, a bit more information and lyrics. And of course, selection of John's LPs on CD. So onto the CD. And that's another great looking label. Really nice looking one. Got the Apple Records perimeter print on there as well. And Lizzie, obviously, this time is spelled correctly on this particular disc. But it sounds absolutely phenomenal, this particular disc. Really great sounding. So the last final version I've got to show then of Live Piece in Toronto is this one called From the Vaults, which was released in 2009. And the catalogue number is SW3362. Let's just take a look at that sleeve first. And it's absolutely identical to the original. This one has a lovely gloss on it actually, a really, really nice shine. And it's got that lovely cloud at the bottom there, just floating in the sky. And then you've got the plastic owner band, Live Piece in Toronto, 1969 there. With all the track listing, Dizzy Miss Lizzie spelled incorrectly again. With all the musicians and the bag productions details for John and Yoko with the Derek Taylor statement and of course that Granny Smith on the bottom right and this is a really quite a wide spine this one it's a really wide one it's really nice though actually so then we've got the calendar there's a little bit of a cardboard stiffener in there as well but we've got a lovely calendar exactly the same as you would have got with your USA copy in 1969 so we've got our inner sleeve then, which is one of the polyline types. Not too bad. So onto the vinyl then. Lovely thick vinyl, 180 gram. Super weight. 
And these are actually based obviously on the American pressings, as you can see. And these were mastered by Capital as well, which is actually on the run out groove area. It's a really nice looking label, quite dark though. But you've got on the plastic I know band at the top there, live piece in Toronto, 1969. And the plastic I know band under that again. With stereo and all the track listings there with Lizzie spelled incorrectly and the catalogue number on the right hand side. The matrix numbers are quite long on these, but it is on side one, five zero nine 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 two four three six two three one three dash A on side one. And of course it says recorded in England, but actually it was recorded in Canada and remixed in England or mixed in England, should we say. Let's flip that over. Once again, you've got the plastic on band there, Live Piece in Toronto, 1969, with stereo, and the track listing, with the catalogue number on side two on the right hand side, with the recorded in England details at the bottom, and produced by John and Yoko, bag. The matrix on side two is 509994, 362313-B but this one does actually sound really good really good pressing this one so the final item that I want to show related to Live Peace in Toronto then is this Sweet Toronto DVD which was released in 1988 by Direct Video Distribution and Gravity Limited catalogue number DVD SV3003D and it's obviously a film that was filmed by D.A. Pennybacker. Um, it's got some extra interviews with Yoko at an art exhibition in 1988. It's got a running time of about 56 minutes, but it's got some other artists as well as the whole set from John. As you can see, we'll take a look at the box first. There's some great photos on there. It's got John and Eric there. With John and Eric again. John and looks like Klaus there. We'll flip that over. And then on the back there, we've got the special features there. Got some more photos with Yoko and John. And you've got all the track listings there with Bo Diddley and Chuck Berry, Jerry Lee Lewis and Little Richard. And then all the set from John and the Plastic Ono Band. And there's the spine. And we'll take a look inside. And once again, you've got a little leaf leaflet in here with all the track listing and the actual disc. So thank you so much for tuning in today guys and I really hope you've enjoyed seeing all those live Peace in Toronto items and don't forget as always I really appreciate your comments and I will always get back to you guys just as soon as I can. So this Thursday I will be doing a very special video celebrating to the date a 55th anniversary of a classic Beatles single and I'm sure you'll be able to work that one out which one it is. So just make sure you're here this Thursday night 8 p.m. Same Beatles time, same Beatles channel. And as always, if you enjoy what I'm doing, why not give us a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. This is Beatle Dave signing off. Beatles, Beatles.